Pork is for dummies. Yes, God. And in this video, this is going to be my update number four, darling. Yes, honey. We done made it to update number four. We done came a long way, but we have made it, darling. So all of my foul pals that are new subscribers, in this video, I just keep, keep, keep it up and let you guys know the real tea, the real knowledge of how to maintain your phalaenopsis orchids. Stay tuned, foul pals. What I'm doing now is I'm going to start it off with my magnesium sulfate, baby. My Epsom salt, okay? And I'm going to go back to just that little pinch. Just that little pinch. Just a little pinch. And this is um, a gallon of 100% rainwater. This is no longer the distilled water. I'm using 100% rainwater, okay? And you're using rainwater because it's low in um, acids and salts. So just a pinch, okay? And the next thing that I'm going to use is my seaweed extract. This is going to be the first time that I'm using the seaweed extract, so I'm super excited. I have read the views and comments of, on this great thing right here, and nothing but great things have been spoken. So in this update video, number four, you're going to see what this new regimen is going to do for my Phalaenopsis orchids. All right, baby. So I have my syringe because the way that this is set up, look, there's no way. So what I'm going to do is stick the syringe. Uh-oh, that didn't work. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to use, I think this is a good amount right here. And that's going to be three milliliters. Okay, foul pals? Do you see it? Come on, 4K. Anyway, you know what's the tea. And I am going to use my cow mag, baby. Use my cow mag. Now, remember, my mom's phalaenopsis orchid is over there surviving on just Epsom salt and water. So, honey, this is letting you guys know that I'm doing all of this, and this is, I might not even have to. So, we're just staying tuned, okay? Um, three milliliters of the cow magic, okay? And that's all, foul pals. So, I'm going to shake it up, and I'll be right back. All right, Fab Pals, so starting with my beautiful pothos, guys. Now, these pothos is a testament of this channel, Orchids for Dummies. When I first started this channel out, this baby hangs time was about this long. And I was telling you guys, I said, oh, my baby getting a little hang time. Yes, honey. So as you can see, honey, she has come. She has come a mighty long way. Yes, honey. Yes. And just, baby, she is calm. She is here, darling. Hang time. Hang time, honey. This is what you want. And the reason I'm showing you guys these um, beautiful pothos is because Epsom salt, Epsom salt, magnesium sulfate, guys, it works not only for your beautiful phalaenopsis orchids, but as well as your pothos and all of your green plants. Okay, foul pals? Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Update number four. All right, foul pals. So what I have done was I used that regimen to foliar feed, to foliar feed snow. And unfortunately, once I got finished trimming her roots, she did not have a lot of um, roots going for herself. So thank God for area roots. That's why, foul pals, if you're new to this, you do not want to cut the roots that grow out of your pot, okay? Because those are area roots. Those are a last ditch effort, if you will, for the Phalaenopsis orchid to maintain what it needs to maintain, okay? So although she really don't have, she really doesn't have any roots, do not fret because the remember the regimen that I'm putting her in is exactly what you want to promote root growth, okay? I got the seaweed, the kelp, everything, honey, everything. So what we are going to do is water culture this baby. 
Now, I messed her. Don't be. Now, hold on now. Because I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to look at this and be discouraged and be like, oh, no, his favorite, one of his favorite orchids is going to die. No, ma'am. Because when you don't have 200 and something orchids, what you can do is give it the loving care that it wants. Stay tuned for update number five, darling. I guarantee you update number five, honey, she will bounce back. How do I know? Because this, this baby right here, my favorite, Miss Blue, She's wet because we are foliar feeding right now. We're foliar feeding. Honey, she was in that same predicament. Look at those beautiful area roots. Look at this. She is actually pot bound, darling. Pot bound. That is what you want from your phalaenopsis orchid, honey. Look, no hands, mummy. No hands. <laughs> so, do not fret, honey. She's going to bounce back, honey. Because she's under good loving care, honey. So we are going to put her in this water culture vase. And just another example. You know my guy, my um, foul pinky. Same predicament. And now this baby got roots, honey. She got roots. We finna pot her up, honey. We finna pot her up, honey. Stay tuned, foul pal. Stay tuned. So I just wanted you to see this vase that I've cleaned with the um, vinegar, cleaning vinegar and rinsed out with water. Um, this is it. And I am just going to, I need her to put that area root up in here, honey. You need that, honey. You need it, girl, you gonna have to do it. You gonna have to do it, Snow. Snow. Girl, you gonna have to do it. You gonna have to do it some kind of way, good. And you gonna have to do it in a cute way. Come on now. Come on. Come on now. Come on, Snow. Come on. Work with me, baby. So, um, Fab Pals, as you can see, she got some damage right here on these roots. Just stay tuned because, honey, this is going to take a minute. But just know that she is going to... She does, She will not let me... I'm sorry. She will not let me put her. She will not let me do it. So, I got to do what she wants me to do, honey. And she's on her life leg. So, she, if this is what she wants, this is... This is what she wants, honey. And this vase was $4. $4 at Walmart. I thought that was really beautiful and elegant for $4. Also, I got this one. I'm going to put my baby blue in here. We want to do water culture for her as well. Um, this was $3. Okay, Fab Pals. Now, that's up my alley. Stay tuned. Okay, Fab Pal, so as I told you, my baby Blue is actually root bound, and now I want to transfer her to do water culture because she has such beautiful roots. I just want to make sure that I'm not having her in some um, acidic um, moss because remember, my baby, De um, not December, but my baby Snow, all of her roots are really affected because I used too much fertilizer on all of them. I even repotted December. I mean, I keep calling her December because they both white. Her name is not, all white phalaenopsis do not look the same, honey. They do not. I got one baby called December and one baby called Snow. Anyway, let's stick to the topic, honey. So, my foul pal, Nicole Connolly, honey. Look at me. I'm naming names because I care. But my foul pal, Nicole Connolly, honey, um, she told us that it's okay to go ahead and, and snip and tuck because she is, this is hard as a rock, um, foul pals. She is not going to come out of here um, easily. And that's ultimately what you want. The only reason I'm putting her in water culture is because um, when I pot this baby, because you know she's set back. She is set back, foul pals, because these leaves have not made a difference yet. So what I'm going to do is, honey, I'm going to snip these roots with some sterilized sterilized scissors because I don't play by my baby blue. Stay tuned, foul pals. All right, foul pals, so I'm just going to take my little scissors and I'm going to apply fire to it. Fire is going to clean all of the bad things, honey. That's why Orchids for Dummies is the fire, honey. It's the fire in the Orchids community, honey. Girl, we putting an end to tyrannies. We putting an end to it, honey. No more. No more. So, okay, um, 
Now what I'm going to do is snip and tuck, baby, snip and tuck. And I'm sorry about this blue, but girl, I told you not to come out of this pot. So as you can see, Fab Pals, oh man. And that's what I meant, Fab Pal, when I said that they are eventually gonna turn black. That's because they cutting off their own circulation. Girl, you can't breathe through this little bit of sleep like that. And we got um, another one over here. Mm, that was a good one. I, I think that was good enough. All right. Now, she is wet like this because we have been foliar feeding. And um, after your foliar feed, if you use a lot of water like I just used, you want to make sure that she is in a ventilated area. You want to make sure that you get all water out of the crown. All right, foul pals, you know, honey, I'm each one teach one. I'm trying to tell you. So, as I told you, honey, she the, this is what I love about Phalaenopsis orchids. This girl that grew through this styrofoam, this packaging peanut. Girl, why is you doing that, honey? Why is you growing through that good? Why is you doing that good? Good, why is you doing that? So, like I told you, she was just in the same predicament as um, my baby um, Snow with no roots. And you see, she has um, made quite a lot of new roots. And that was just using the Epsom salt. So I am have I have great expectations. Look at all of this. I have great expectations um, with the kelp and the... Um, the garden lime. Foul pals, let me know if it's okay to put the garden lime into the water when I'm feeding them. Or do I do it when I'm foliar feeding? Um, if I'm not, if I don't have them in soil, um, is it okay um, to put the lime? How do I feed the lime to them? I mean, explain it to me, foul pals. Also, I just wanted to let you know in a previous video, I told you about a flat root. This is a flat root. And this flat root has produced all of these roots off just, just that root alone. And so I'm hoping that's going to be the same situation for my baby Snow. All right, foul pal. So some people might want to see me put it in here. This is how you repot a uh, uh, orchid in, in water culture, honey. In water culture. So she's going to be in there like that. This. I'm going to put that foam in there because I don't want to cut her root off. Mm. Oh, come on, baby. Come on. Come on. See, I knew she would fit perfectly in there. That is beautiful, guys. That is beautiful. So I'm going to clean that water up and she is going to be in my living room, honey. Stay tuned. Okay, foul pals. So with my baby um, Pinky, the only thing that I'm going to do, I am going to repot him. I am going to repot him, but I'm going to um, take the packaging peanuts out because I don't need it because I don't have very large holes in the bottom of the pot because now I'm going to use the premium, the premium um, pocket um, orchid um, potting mix from repotme.com, honey. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to the um, go to my orchid supplies, honey. And it's just all kind of barks and pebbles and all kind of foolishness, honey. But it's the good kind, honey. It's the good kind. So, like I said, this is not going to be a repotting video. As you can see, she's just um, same inch pot. This is his root system. Um, he is going to be just fine, honey. He's going to be just fine. I'm putting him in his root. I, I mean, he's I mean, he's going to be just fine, darling. He's going to be just fine. Stay tuned. Now, foul pals, I wanted you to see this in case no one ever told you. When you water your phalaenopsis orchids, the reason why the three ice cubes is not going to be enough is because even with moss, something that's water retentive, once you, I've watered this thoroughly, and as you can see, it is still have, it still has dry patches in it. 
Now, those dry patches, that can cause a problem for you. If you're thinking that you have water, your phalaenopsis orchid, and she's not retaining water, that's something that you want to definitely look for. So when you water your phalaenopsis orchids, make sure that you do the Dolly Parton, as my foul pal in a previous video said. You want to go by the weight of the pot. Make sure that this, water, this plant is getting watered when you water her, okay? Stay tuned. Oh, and another thing is this um, premium orchid mix that I got from repotme.com, aka Amazon. Um, it had a lot. It has a lot of dust and debris in it, honey. Well, I'm not gonna say debris, but it's very, very dusty. So that's something that you guys want to keep in mind before you purchase it. Listening to hashtag Danny. All right, foul pal. So my basil basil key. Oh, oh, oh! Oh my God! I'm genuinely scared. Um, I knew that she was going through because I had dehydrated them for um, at least two weeks. I dehydrated them and. Um, Look, foul pals, what she did was, this is a magnesium deficiency. If I'm wrong, foul pals, let me know. But I'm telling you, this is a magnesium deficiency. Okay, foul pals, now I'm very somber about this situation. However, it's a learning experience because this is the um, basal kiki phalaenopsis. When I um, deprived them from water um, for about two weeks thinking that... Um, out of all of my orchids, maybe somebody will produce me a cakey. What happened was the mother plant, she was sucking energy from this plant, the baby cakey, which is um, really um, pretty much um, crown rot. And it was already like that because it hasn't grown. It hasn't, it's slowly dying, slowly. It hasn't produced any new roots. It hasn't do done anything. And this leaf just fell off the mother plant. So she is pretty much done, foul pals. Is my mom wants to repot this Phalaenopsis orchid that's in bark that we got two weeks ago into some moss in a whole different pot. So stay tuned, foul pals. Can you tell me why you want to repot your Phalaenopsis orchid? Because all the roots is out. And they need to be in so they can stay wet a little bit. <laughs> they drying out. Don't you see that one right there? It was real good and green like this one, but it's just drying out. It needs something to keep it kind of moist. What you can do is, like we got it in this tray right here, you could get some other kind of tray like this and put some pebbles on it and put some water on it. And um, when they evaporate, it'll keep humidity up around the plant. Or like I told you, put it somewhere in the bathroom because these air roots so you don't want to put these in dirt because if you put it in dirt it's gonna kill it okay so it's like danged if you do and danged if you don't but we'll still go ahead and repot it while we had with the roots first um a bug came up out of there so honey i got to running <laughs> and hollering and screaming honey so but all right foul pal stay tuned i'm only doing this because my mom wanted me to and this is out of the um out of my blessing that she did so. I'm making a video, so I just wanted to give you a sneak peek. I had a little bit of the bark chips from the old pot at the bottom, um, and the rest is going to be um, fluffy moss. And this is how the roots is sitting up in the pot. Okay, foul pals? And foul pals, we are done this beautiful, beautiful, Phalaenopsis orchid, honey. You see, honey, she had one bud left. She repotted her in some moss from bark. Auntie Carolyn, do you see it, honey? We gonna see where it go. This is gonna be another video for can you repot a Phalaenopsis while it's in bloom? But um, so far she's doing good. No leaf growth. No um, active root, root growth. Um, those roots right there, um, they were stalled. I learned from my foul pal, Rick L. Um, when they're actively growing like that and the pot is constantly being banged around and they're being moved, that will cause them to delay root growth. So, 
Um, and this is my other, um, my mom's other baby, honey. She just gave her some water because those leaves was looking like she was dehydrated all together, darling. And, um, this is the new leaf, honey. Honey, honey. Bless it, bless it, honey. And this the setback leaf, honey. She's not gonna do anything more, honey. And this one, honey, she look like, honey, she about to look like she hanging on by a thread, darling. But all right, pal, pal. I'm too bad, pal.